Hi students, welcome to exercise 41, topic on permutations. Alright, so an arrangement of, of a set objects in which the order of the objects important, so notice I underline that, the order must be important, we call that a permutation. So for example, how many ways can you arrange four people sitting on a bench would be permutation, um, as how many ways can you choose a group of four from a class would not be, we'll deal with those later. So. Anytime you're arranging a set of people in sort of a line, this is uh, a, called a permutation. So how many possible arrangements can we make the, of the letters C-A-T? Okay, so there's obviously C-A-T, so cat, but you can also rearrange it as C-T-A, T-A-C, T -C, and so on for all those for six possible arrangements. So these are called permutations. So there are six permutations for the arrangements of the letters C to T, C-A-T, sorry. All right, so the way we, uh, in math that we uh, describe this is the number of distinct objects n that can be placed in r positions. So we often see n p r. Okay, so um, <laughs> notice that there's a code missing here. That's okay. So over here, n p r is an equation that is defined by n factorial, so the amount of objects that you have available, divided by n minus r for the amount of positions, again, so not positions, uh, objects minus positions factorial. So for the first example here, we have three letters for three positions, correct? So we have the letters C, A, T, so three letters, and I'm trying to make arrangements of three positions. So if I was to use the formula directly, what you would end up is you say, 3p3, which is 3 factorial, which is your n, divided by 3 minus 3 factorial. And this gives us 3 factorial divided by 0 factorial, which would simply be 3 factorial is 6 divided by 1, which is 6. Again, matches the six possible arrangements I have here. This button is also found in your calculator, so I would uh, encourage you to find that button. Uh, you might have to search a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Um, so on your calculator, uh, it's often under the probability code, or it could be a second function under a number, but NPR, so what you would plug in, you would plug in your 3 first, then you would use your button NPR, and then you plug in a 3 for a second spot, and then you would just press equals, it should give you 6. Okay, another example, given the letters A, a B, C, D, E, F, how many arrangements of four letters can we produce? Obviously, we're going to not be able to allow uh, repetitions. Okay, so what we have here is we have six possible letters, and we're, we have four possible positions, right, because the four letters. Therefore, it would just simply be six factorial divided by six minus four factorial, which would be six factorial divided by two factorial. And that would be, if you look at the simplification of factorials, could cancel the 2 factorial out, and what we're left with is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. Um, so that would be 30 times 12, which is 360. All right, notice that if I was just to take my letters and arrange them in order, so we're just going to kind of do this on the side. So the first position, I would have technically anything from A to F. So I would have six options, right? And since I have to use one for this position, I would only have five options for the next position. I would have four options for the next and three options for the next one. Notice that that's exactly what we have here. Six, five, four, three, six, five, four, three. So these are equivalent in terms of strategies. All right, so what happens when you have permutations with restrictions? The first restriction we're gonna deal with is repetition. So how many possible arrangements of the letters of the word continent? Okay, so whenever we have two or more identical objects, for example, n and n are identical. So if I was going to move this n over here and move this n over here, I would not actually change anything. Okay, so if we were to interchange these two objects, nothing would change. Therefore, if we have, in this example, we have nine letters, we would divide the amount of possible permutations by the repetitions. So here, technically, you have nine factorial, which is all the possible um, sorry, 9 factorial here, we have all the possible letters arranged. But since we have repetitions of letters, 
what we're going to do is we're going to divide by those repetitions. So notice you have three n's. So what we're going to we're going to divide by three factorial, and we also have two t's, right? So you would divide by two factorial. So these would be the n's, and the two factorial would be the t's. There are no other repetitions, right? There's one c, one o, one i, one e, okay? And therefore, that's all you would do. And this is how you would calculate the amount of arrangements that are possible with the letters continent. So here, I'd recommend you use a calculator because the numbers are pretty big. So again, try to find when that the, the factorial button is. So here, you don't actually need to use the permutation button as long as you can find the factorial button, So which is the exclamation mark. So you would just plug in 9 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial. And you would get 30,240. All right. Now let's say we must travel from point X to point Y by only moving left to right and up to down. How many ways can we travel from X to Y? All right. Well, in this example, um, if you think about it, no matter what, you're going to have to move down four times. Okay? doesn't matter where you are, there will be five, four moving down. Right? This path, okay, notice, would have two same down movements as this path. So again, I'm going to follow that. So if you go all the way down here, you would have gone down here. And if you were to start down there and here, notice that these two paths would have had the exact same two down movements. And we would have had the exact same right movement all the way here. So how we're going to calculate this is we're going to say, okay, well, there are a total of 10 movements I need to make because I'm going to have to go right six times and I'm going to have to go down six times. So you'd have 10 factorial. Those are the total amount of moves you can make. But because there are a repetition of going down and going to the right, we are going to divide that by four factorial and six factorial, which would be, these are the down movements. And these are the right movements. Okay, and basically from this part, uh, this point, you just calculate it. So you would just go 10 factorial again in your calculator, divided by 4 factorial uh, times 6 factorial. And your total amount of different movements is 210. So there are 210 different ways to get from X to Y. All right, sometimes uh, permutations have restrictions on position. So, for example, Adam, Beth, and Carson all are part of a group of eight people. So now we need to sit these eight people in a row, but only Adam, Beth, and Carson can sit on the two ends. How many different ways can we, the eight people sit in a row? Okay, well, there's the beginning spot. There are six spots in the middle, and then there are spots at the end. So these two end spots can only be sat in by Adam, Beth, or Carson. So for the first position here, I only have Adam, Beth, or Carson is available. Well, three people can sit at that spot. Now, again, as we did in the previous example, always start with the restrictions. So my next point, I'm going to go down here. I have an also restriction on this spot. So here, since one of these people needs to sit there, there are only two people left to sit at the end. So three people can sit at the front or in the start, two people can sit at the end, and now I have six people that can sit in the middle seats. It doesn't matter who they are, because one of these three people will sit in there. So you're going to have six, five, four, three, two, one in the middle. So what would that look like? Well, it's simply six, or sorry, three times six factorial times two. Okay, again, it's just simply using a calculator to solve that. Oops. And we have a total of 43,200 different, sorry, 4,320 different ways they can be seated. All right, so now situation with a permutation. So now let's say I'm solving for n if I have np2 equals 30. Well, np2 is defined by npr, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So what I can say 
is, well, this is n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals to 30. So now this looks very similar to what I did in exercise 40. So I'm going to expand this n factorial all the way to n minus 2. And now I can cancel out this n minus 2 factorial. And all I'm left with is n times uh, n times n minus 1, which is n squared minus n equals 30. You have n squared minus n minus 30 equals 0. And all I'm doing is solving algebraically now. So we have n minus, whoops, should be n minus 6. And n plus 5 equals 0. n equals 6. n equals negative 5. And since we can't have a, a negative amount of objects, n equals negative 5 is rejected, and n equals 6 is accepted. So again, if you were to check this, plug in n equals 6 in your calculator, n p2 should give you 30. All right, and the last type of restriction is when you group objects. So let's say we have six people. A, B, C, D, E, F are the people, and they need to be seated on the bench. How can we ways can they be seated if A and B must be together? All right, well, the way to deal with this is we're going to count A and B as one person. So they become one person, and we have C, D, E, and F as all different people. So if you look at it, we have five different people only to sit on the bench because those two people need to be sit seated together. So this would be five factorial different ways. But don't forget that A and B, they don't have to be stuck A and B. They can be B and A. So what that gives us is they can be seated in two factorial ways. And you bring that together, what you have is five factorial times two factorial, which would give us 240 different ways those people can be seated in a row. Now, let's say A and B cannot sit together. Well, the way we deal with this, cannot sit together, is we simply say, well, we, we could find every single possibility, so every, and we subtract when they are together. So you find all the possible solutions, and then subtract when they are together, all the other ways are when they're not together. Okay, well, if there are six people, Every single possible way, well, that's six factorial. We have six different people sitting in a row. Now, together, we've actually just found that. That was together right here. So you would subtract five factorial, two factorial. And again, the calculation, so this would be 720 minus 240, uh, which would be 820 different ways they could be seated not together. All right, so now let's go A and B, and also D and E must sit together. So A and B is going to be counted as one person, C is by themselves, D and E is going to be counted as one person, and F is by themselves. Okay, well, very similar to the first example, I technically only have four people that I'm arranging, so four factorial, but this guy could be arranged two factorial ways, and this guy could be arranged two factorial ways, and therefore, total possible op options is... 4 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial, which would be 96 different ways that they can be arranged. All right, sometimes in questions, especially questions without a calculator, you will be asked to leave it in factorial form because we're not interested in you evaluating. This is a number just as much as this one. So if I was asking for the factorial form, this would be your final solution. If I wanted the evaluated form, so for example, if you have a calculator, that's when you're going to throw into the calculator to get 96. So just make sure you're aware of what the question is asking. All right, guys, good luck on lesson 41.